we bless your name, God. I believe the Lord is pleased with our worship on this morning. Can we just give God another hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to make the most of this opportunity. So if we could stand to our feet. I want us to go to Hebrews chapter 12. It's so good to see everybody in the house of the Lord this morning. But I know we have a lot to do. So I want to make sure uh, that we give honor to God's word on this morning. Hebrews chapter 12. I want us to look at verses 5 through 6. I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. The Bible declares this. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, my child, don't don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. And notice what verse number six says, for the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child, as his child. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to continue on this theme this morning. I've been talking about a disciplined life. Somebody say a disciplined life. And here's what I need us to understand about a disciplined life. I'm still trying to work this out in my own life. This is God's design for every disciple. If I want to be a disciple of God, I have to live a disciplined life. My wife was getting on to me today about not being disciplined. I was undisciplined in some areas. And if I want God to be pleased with my life, tell your neighbor, I've got to be disciplined. And I've made mention of this before throughout this sermon series, but there are times when it will be necessary for God to use discipline, watch this, to cause us to live disciplined lives. See, this is the part of God we don't like, but what really God is trying to get us to be is better disciples. So if he needs us to be better disciples, he has to use, somebody say discipline. Uh, yeah, I know we don't like that. We ain't like when our mama disciplined us. We ain't like when our daddy disciplined us. But God is trying to get us to be the disciples that he desires. And this word discipline that we find in our foundational text is on your screen is this Greek word. And one of these um, translation of this word is to instruct by training. Uh, this is why they say don't beat your children out of anger because discipline should be used to instruct them by training. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? So what God does is many times he has to rebuke us, correct us in order to instruct us by way of training. Uh, So this is why God disciplines us and many of us don't understand God's discipline, but it's necessary. Somebody say it's necessary. So if we can be honest, there are some areas in our lives that are undisciplined because we failed either to receive instruction or heed the instruction of God that was necessary for us to be disciplined. Y'all may not believe me, but many of our mouths were undisciplined, undisciplined because we had no instructions on how to tame our tongues. Nobody told us to tame our tongue. And watch this, many of us, this is why you got kids that used to run their mouth as children and now they're adults and they still run their mouths because nobody checked them. Somebody say they needed discipline. Ah, so, so, so many of us run our mouths because nobody gave us instructions on that. Many of us don't know how to handle our money and it's undisciplined because we had no instructions on how to steward our money. They said we could spend it any kind of way we wanted and this is why we're undisciplined. And many, even us, and this is why I hate this, this cliche or what they give black folk that we can't be on time nowhere. Even our time management is undisciplined because we had no, some would say, instructions. I saw my mama come late. I saw my grandma come late. So I might as well slide in. Some would say late. Yeah, that's why y'all undisciplined today. And this is why I believe for many to include believers that we're not undisciplined. Watch this because of a lack of intent. But many of us are undisciplined because we lacked instructions. Somebody say, I need instructions. Uh, so how do I know? I made mention of this throughout this sermon series, but the word disciple is derived from the word discipline. It's, it's, this word disciple is derived from this word discipline. And notice this, in order to be a disciple, you need someone that you can follow. Right, right. So if, if, if in like manner as a disciple, I need someone that I can follow and, and follow their instructions, it is no different with discipline. If it's derived from the word, if disciple is derived from the word discipline, then in order to have discipline, I need someone, somebody to say to follow. Yeah, so I need some level of instructions. And this is why we're so undisciplined in areas, because we don't have mentors in certain areas that need to discipline us. 
Uh, so one of the things that we've got to ask ourselves, if your life is in disarray, if your life has some area of dysfunction, one of the questions we got to ask ourselves is, have we failed to receive and heed the instructions designed for our discipline? If there's an area you don't know how to keep your house clean, you may not have the right instructions. If you don't know how to manage your money, you may not have the right instructions. Your life, if there's an area where there's disarray or dysfunction, tell your neighbor, I need instructions. So here's the word of wisdom. I, I, need, I need to drop this off. I believe it's on your screen. Uh, I, I, I need you to understand this. Even when we have instructions for discipline, those instructions can be both deceptive and distorted. Did y'all hear what I just said? Even when you receive instructions from somebody, somebody say somebody. somebody, those instructions can be deceptive and distorted. And somebody may be saying, what do I mean? If your instructions were not divine instructions, somebody say rooted in, the, in God's word, then those instructions can be deceptive and distorted. I know many of us have, have re um, reached out to folk for instructions on areas, but it was not rooted in God's word. And watch what 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 9 says. The Bible says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 9. So although y'all may not like this, I know you may not like this. It could have came from your mama. It could have came from your parent. It could have came from your prayer partner. And watch this, it could have even came from your pastor. But if those instructions were not rooted in his word, then they are foolish. And better yet, you will fail to find your life in discipline. Oh, y'all don't like that this morning. I know some of y'all thought y'all mama could do no wrong. But some of y'all mamas was just wrong if they gave us instructions that were not, somebody say, divine. They told you how to keep a man and that was not rooted in God's word. And you're wondering why that man is running your house in dysfunction. Somebody say, I need divine instruction. I know your mama cute, but she can be carnal too. Uh, in other words, have wisdom not rooted in God's word. And it's important to note again, watch this. So I've got to reflect back on my life. And I've got to look at areas that are in disarray, are in dysfunction, that are not aligning with God's word. And I've got to find the source in which I've received those instructions. Somebody say they got to be divine. And this is why many times God has to Somebody say, discipline me. Uh, it's important to note, again, that we can't truly call ourselves disciples of Christ, void of living disciplined lives. I'm striving for that, y'all. As believers, we got to strive to be more disciplined. I ain't talking about just so you can get a promotion on your job. I'm not just talking about so that you can get a little line of credit, and that's why you're trying to be disciplined. No, we want to be, want God to be pleased. Um, so watch this. It is important to note that when you can't readily receive the instruction of the Lord, many times this is when rebuke is necessary. I hope y'all just caught what I just said. Because listen, I need y'all to notice this. God is talking to all of us. God has told us that what to do in many areas of our lives. He told us to leave that man alone. He told us to get our money together. He told us to make sure that we honor him with all of our gifts. And God has told us that. But when we don't readily, readily receive it, God has to somebody say sin rebuke. In other words, the Lord's discipline. Because many times the preacher can preach a word. Your friend can give you a word from God. And you're going to say, girl, I'm going to do my own thing. And this is when God has to stir up trouble in your life. In other words, the Lord's discipline is when, watch this, he confronts, he corrects, and he chastises us in areas that we are unwilling to readily receive counsel. I need y'all to understand what his discipline is. So don't just think God is trying to beat you upside the head. What he's trying to do is confront, he's trying to correct, and he's trying to chastise you in areas where you did not readily receive counsel. Somebody say, that's the Lord's discipline. And as it is with natural children, so it is with us. There are times when their ability to be trained is not effective through counsel alone. And it requires confronting. There's sometimes where I got to spank my babies. I know they look cute, y'all, but sometimes they need a little pop, pop on the behind. Because when I told them, they did not listen. And somebody said, God's the same way. See, y'all don't like that. Y'all did it with your own children. I believe our foundational text reveals this truth to us. And this is why discipline life will require that type of discipline from the Lord. But watch this. I believe we also find something uh, even greater truth. Now, not only does the Lord discipline cause us to abound in discipline, but the Lord's discipline is our place of affirmation. Somebody say affirmation. 
I done just went in and I ain't even tell y'all what the title of the sermon is. I'm going to minister that discipline is the place of affirmation. In other words, the Lord's pl- discipline is not a place of rejection, but it's really where the Lord wants to receive us. Did y'all catch what I just said? Many of us say God don't like me. God ain't God treating me some kind of way. I don't want to serve a God that's going to treat me like that. But God is not rejecting us. Somebody say he's trying to receive me. Yeah, he's trying to posture ourselves so that we can be received by God. And here lies one of the reasons that many believers don't like the Lord's discipline. Because they perceive it as a place of rejection. But our perspective must change to see it as a place where the Lord receives us. Oh, that's good news, y'all. When God ain't disciplining you, that's when you need to watch yourself. Somebody say, I'm in danger then. Yeah, I believe if we can receive the Lord's discipline, then our reward will be a disciplined life. Therefore, here's some critical questions before I examine our text. Let's go to the next screen. I want us to see these. I guess we got a little technical difficulties. Notice what I want us to understand. How is the Lord's discipline the place of affirmation. That's a question we got to ask ourselves. What does the Lord's discipline affirm both in us and in his instruction that will cause us to live disciplined lives? Those are questions we got to ask ourselves, and I want to answer them this morning. So for the sake of time, I want us to jump right into our text. I don't want us to run from the Lord's discipline, but I want us to receive it readily so that we can find ourselves living disciplined lives. So let's look at the first portion of the text. The Bible says this, the value, watch this, my child, don't make like, uh, uh, or in other words, somebody say despise of the Lord's discipline and don't give up. Somebody say don't be discouraged when he corrects you. Here's the first thing I need us to understand. The, the reason why the Lord's discipline is the place of affirmation because there's value in his chastisement. Somebody say I receive value from that. In other words, many believers reject the Lord's discipline. It's a little bit too loud in the monitors. I don't know who turned that up. Because many believe that his discipline is a sign of rejection. So watch this. The reality is, is the Lord's discipline is not the Lord's rejection, but it's the Lord's attempt. Watch this to, for us to receive him. Y'all stand with me. I know we got a lot going on. Somebody may be saying, how do I know? Somebody say, how do I know? The phrase don't give up in our foundational text is the Greek word, which means to not faint or grow weary. So this means this portion of the text really is saying is I don't want you to grow weary or faint when I discipline you. And many of us give up in the journey when God corrects us. Y'all stand with me? So he's saying don't grow weary. And why is this grow weary so significant? Because throughout scripture, we always see on the other side of weary is our due season. Someone say my due season. We're reminded throughout scripture, if we do not faint, there's something that's due to us. Can we go to the next screen? Watch this. Job 3.17 reminds us if we don't grow weary, we are due rest. Somebody say rest. rest. Isaiah 40.31 reminds us if we don't grow weary, we are due to be renewed. Somebody say renewed. renewed. And Galatians 6.9 reminds us if we don't grow weary, we're due to reap. Somebody say reap. And many times, many of us give up in the journey. People pick it on me. My pastor don't like me. They always calling out this and that in my life. And really what God is trying to get you to is your due season. Someone say my due season. season. And y'all keep living raggedy, undisciplined lives and watch this. You negate your due season. Oh, somebody help me today. There's some stuff that's been laid up. If we can just be somebody say disciplined. When we do not reject the the discipline of the Lord, we are promised to reap from the Lord. That's the good news. That means there's a promise that's been laid up for us when we can allow the Lord's discipline to do his work in us. Somebody say, Lord, discipline me. See, y'all don't want them kind of rewards because, you know, God, give me the reward with my life still living raggedy. Somebody say it don't work that way. There, There are promises to be a due season for the disciplined believer. The Lord's discipline, watch this, makes you eligible for what's due. Now, that's good news to me, y'all. That means God says there's some stuff that's been laid up for you. But the only way that you're made eligible is if you live. Someone say discipline. I don't want to waste what's been laid up for me because I'm unwilling to be disciplined. This is why discipline is the place of affirmation. 
Because God ain't trying to take nothing from you. You feel like I want to live my life any kind of way. I want to just do what, what I want to do. I want to do what seems right in my own eyes. And what God is trying to say, I'm trying to get you to understand that if you, if you live disciplined, I've got something, somebody say, laid up for me. Oh, that's good news. That's good news to me. Somebody say, we got to look at his discipline different. Yeah, therefore, our ability to allow the Lord's discipline to discipline our lives is a setup for the Lord to deposit in our lives. This is why I said in our, my, my founded, um, introduction that we've got to change our perspective on when God corrects us. Notice what the New Living Translation of Proverbs 16, 22 declares. It says, discretion is life give, a life-giving fountain to, to those who possess it, but discipline is wasted on fools. This means the Lord's design for discipline in the life of a believer is to be life-giving. And I said this in some of my other um, previous sermons. One of the reasons why a lot of believers don't want to live disciplined lives is because we believe that God is trying to put chains on our lives. We believe God is trying to restrain some stuff from us. We believe that we can't have fun as a believer in a, anymore. Somebody say, the devil is a lie. What God is trying to do is to set you up that your life, watch this, everything associated with discipline would be life-giving. Oh, that's good news, y'all. I don't know about if nobody feeling this, but I am. It's going to help me be more disciplined. This means, watch this, discipline is not because he is rejecting us, but so that we can receive from him. And this is why a foundational text admonishes us not to despise discipline because it's, a God's, it's God's setup to give us what's due. Not to be discouraged by discipline. Somebody say, it's a setup. It's a setup to give me what's due. And not to deprive ourselves of discipline. Somebody say, it's a setup to give us what's due. I don't know about anybody else, but I want what's due me. Y'all know when folk owe you money, you want them to pay you. Somebody say, right now. And God is saying, I've got something for you. And watch this, he wants to give it to you. Somebody say, now. And your access to that is a disciplined life. Somebody say, I got to be disciplined. How? What well, if we could just get that thought in our mind that God is saying, as soon as you clean up your life and, your, and get discipline in your money, there's going to be a release. See, I ain't talking about what these um, prosperity preachers are preaching you and saying you got to sow. No, what really God is trying to say, I need you to be more disciplined. I can trust you with more money when you can be disciplined over the money I gave you. And the reason God ain't giving you no more money is because you can't be disciplined. Oh, that's good news, y'all. You want folk to sow into your life. You want promotion. You want all of that. Someone say, I've got to be disciplined. God is saying, I'm going to give you what's due. We, and watch this. This means if we're failing to receive deposits in our lives. Watch this. Deposits from God. There's some things that God wants to give us. We may need to question our willingness to receive his discipline and our inability to be disciplined. God is always in the business of doing something, somebody say new. He's always in the business of doing something new and he always wants to release something new into the believer. But somebody say, I gotta be disciplined. Because the Lord's discipline and a disciplined life makes us eligible for what's due. Somebody say, I got some stuff due. I don't know about y'all, but if I got some stuff due, I'm gonna do what I got to do to get it. Y'all know when, I, I'm just putting this in the natural context. I know there's been times when UPS would drop off a package and I wasn't home because I had to sign for it. I would tell them to leave that thing at the UPS place and I'll come pick it up myself. In other words, I made arrangements to get what's due me. And many times God is saying, all you got to do is make arrangements. And somebody say, that's discipline. That's discipline. I ain't got to sow into no pastor. I ain't got to be, I ain't got to be um, giving up my whole check to, um, to get no blessing. I just got to be disciplined. Uh, and this is why discipline is a place of affirmation because there's value in his chastisement. In other words, God is always trying to add to me as a result of discipline. Uh, so here's the next thing I want us to see because I know we, I, we, we're short on time. The, the Bible says, for the Lord discipline those he loves. In other words, Discipline is both the reflection of the Lord's love and it reveals the Lord's love. I need y'all to catch me and catch me good. When, when God checks us, it's really that he loves us. Somebody say, he really loved me. And many believers find it difficult to correlate discipline with compassion. 
This is why you can't just beat your kids and just and don't say nothing why you beating them. Because you've got to let them know that the reason I'm doing this is because I love you. I, I, I see you on a track that's going to may even take your life. So I'm trying to associate my discipline with compassion. Some say God's the same way. And this is why a foundational text reminds us that the Lord disciplined those that he loves. This means hear this and you need to hear this good. Where there is no discipline, there can be no devotion. If I never discipline my kids, I don't really love them. If you don't check folk in your life that you know are going astray, you don't really love them. If you see me about to fall off of a cliff and you don't try to tell me to go the other way, someone say, you don't really love me. Yeah, you need it. Somebody say, please check me. Please check yeah, me. please check me. And so what God is doing, God is trying to say, I discipline you because I have a level of devotion towards you. Therefore, if we call ourselves disciples and never receive the discipline of God, then we can never declare that God loves us. Woo. Somebody say, that's dangerous. That, that means if God has never corrected you, then God has no compassion for you. If God has never chastised you, then God has no compassion for you. If God, watch this, has never convicted you, then God has no compassion for you. Oh, somebody say, what a sad tragedy. That means where there is no discipline of God, we find ourselves in danger with God. And I want you to know, if you don't readily receive his counsel, and you don't readily receive his correction, at some point he's going to take away his compassion. So this is why we can't play with living undisciplined lives. Because yes, God is, is long-suffering, but at some point that love, watch this, will fade away. Because it's just, if I don't, if I'm not, and this is why the Bible says that his spirit will, will not um, terror with men always. In other words, the very thing that convicts us of sin, tell your neighbor, if he don't convict me, I'm in a dangerous place. Yeah, I'm in a dangerous place. And I, it's already on our screen. I need us to see something in Proverbs chapter 21, verses 24 through 26. The Bible says, because I've called you and you refuse, I stretched out my hand and no one regarded. Because you disdain all my counsel and would have none of my rebuke, I will also, somebody say, this is God. I will laugh at your calamity and I will mock when your terror comes. So y'all can think God is loving all he wants. Somebody say, he's the same today. Yesterday and forevermore. See, I ain't playing with God. Y'all can play with God all you want. Someone say, I ain't playing with him. Yeah, I ain't playing with him. If he going to correct me in an area, I need to make sure I get it in order because he has compassion towards me. This means, hear this, our inability to re receive discipline will cause us to receive calamity. Don't, watch this, I'm going to say something y'all ain't going to like this. Don't blame everything on the devil. Somebody say, don't blame everything on the devil. Everything ain't the devil. Some of us are just undisciplined. And God says, because you were undisciplined, I'm going to laugh at your calamity. And many times God has to get us on our face as a result of calamity to get us to live a disciplined life. Oh, so somebody say, I don't need God to do all that. Listen, I don't need God to do all that. Sometimes I watch folk fall, and that's all I need. God don't send me there. That's all I needed to see to get my life disciplined. There's some stuff that I do now. Somebody say right now. Because I watch other pastors fall on their face. And God said, I said, God, that was all I needed to see. I was up too close to watch their fall because they were unwilling to be disciplined. And that's all it took. Somebody say, that's all it took. And I want y'all to know this, it may, it may sound mean, but God is so loving that he will cause you to watch others fall in your face. Folk that you love. And some might say that's a sign of his compassion as well. Because he wants you, to do, wants you to understand what the fruit of an undisciplined life will really look like. Oh God, some might say all I need to do is see. Yeah, all I need to do is see. We put ourselves in danger when we don't receive the discipline of God. But here's the good news, that this discipline, why discipline is a place of affirmation, because discipline, watch this, I'm going to teach y'all a word this morning, some of y'all might know it, is the veracity of his compassion. The veracity of his compassion. Somebody may be saying, what do I mean? This word veracity means authentic. In other words, the authentic love of God is found at the place where we have access to his discipline. The way 
in which you know that God really loves you is at the place of discipline. Because watch this, the folk that God loves, he won't let you live any kind of way. The day that God lets me treat my wife any kind of way, somebody say I'm in danger. The day that God lets me talk to y'all any kind of way, somebody say I'm in danger. And you've got pastors that will talk to parishioners any kind of way and feel no conviction. Somebody say they're in danger. Oh, I need God to convict me. Every time I do something, God, that's not in your will, sometimes, every time that my life is in dysfunction and disarray, God don't let me live any kind of way. So, 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 hear this. Here's a word of wisdom. Stop getting offended. I need y'all to hear this. My battery might be going dead, but I want us to hear this. Stop getting offended when people call you, call out your carnality. Did y'all catch what I just said? Because it just might be God extending you compassion. Did y'all hear what I just said? Serena, can you get me another mic? Listen, stop getting offended when people call out your carnality. Because it might be God extending you compassion. I know it's a whole bunch of stuff going on. I really believe it's the enemy don't want us to hear this. I know a lot of people say that, but I believe that. So here's a litmus test. If you are being called out with the compassion of God. Because somebody say, everybody can't call me out. Somebody say, everybody can't call me out. Because you got folk that think they're the spiritual police and you cannot call me out. Everybody's not eligible to call me out. In other words, here's a good litmus test. If you, if you want to know if this is the, the compassion of God calling out my carnality, did they, do, did they call you out with the character of God? In other words, somebody say with grace. grace. See, on, the only folk that can call me out is folk that call me out with grace. That, that, that I'm, oh, the only reason, Pastor Keith, that I'm bringing this to your attention is because I love you. I see you going in a way that could cause your life Somebody say to be in danger. See, if you're going to call me out and just rebuke me to be rebuking me so that you can say you got a little prophetic gift on your life, you, somebody say you can keep that rebuke. And watch this. Here's a good thing for all of us to know. If God prompts you to call anybody out con- according to their sin, call them out with the character of God. Somebody say with grace. And listen, I don't want nobody calling nobody out at the way church if you can't call them out with grace. Because in, in the reason you can't call them out with grace, watch this, is because your mouth is undisciplined. Get your mouth disciplined before you call anybody out with your mouth. Uh, because every correction, every um, chastisement, and every call out of our sin done, is done with grace. God is trying to extend his compassion. Many of us miss out on God's compassion because we get mad at folk that call us out in our sin. And, and many times it's not sin, y'all. People just say, I, I've had Pastor Cole tell me this. My wife told me this this morning. Keith, you got to be more disciplined. And I told her I received that. I know it. And listen, I was, I was like, boo, I receive it. And she, because she did it with the character of God. You know what she said? She said, I had to pray before I told you. Because she it wasn't going to come out all nice, but I received it because she did it with the character of God. That means your inability to receive correction will cause your inability to receive his compassion. Did y'all catch what I just said? Whenever we receive correction, God is trying to give us his compassion. I need you to understand that David was rebuked because God loved him. Peter was rebuked because God loved him. And God will rebuke us and sometimes somebody say it will come from a person. Because he loves you. That's good news, y'all. Miss Cindy, keep calling me out. Pastor Cole, keep calling me out. Serena, keep calling me out because it reminds me that God loves me. Here's what Revelation 3.19 says. And as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Ooh, somebody said that's good news. Be careful if there's an area in your life where conviction no longer has access to. Somebody say that's dangerous. If I can just live any kind of way, talk to folk any kind of way, if I can do things any kind of way, and I never receive correction, somebody say that's dangerous. dangerous. Y'all better pray for God's correction. Come on, God, send your correction because it reminds me that you love me. Where there is no rebuke, not only do we receive God's love, but hear this, this is why I said this, we also might just be reprobates. 
Somebody may be saying, how do I know? Watch, this is why I say it's dangerous. Let's go to the next screen. Romans chapter 1, verse 28 through 29. And as it did not seem good to them to acknowledge God, so God, somebody say God did. God did. I know the song, but I want you to say it again. Somebody say God did. God did. Deliver them up to be a reprobate mind and do things which are not right. Being full of unrighteous, doing a fornication, wickedness. Somebody say God will allow you to do all of that. When we don't receive his discipline and correction, he'll say, go on here, go on out there. And somebody say, that's dangerous. Because there, there is fruit to living like that. And somebody say, it's death. It's death. Yeah, it's death, y'all. God is trying to help us this morning. Our prayer must be, Lord, don't let us live any kind of way. Somebody say, God, don't let me live any kind of way. Yeah, rebuke me, rebuke me, because the Lord's discipline reveals his love for us. I'm going to chunk this off. So here's the thing is, I needed us to understand that it's the veracity of his compassion. And here's the last thing. Uh, the Bible says, and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. Discipline not only reveals his love, but discipline also reveals the Lord's lineage. Somebody say lineage. lineage. Because the correction of God reveals who are the children of God. So here's my third point. Here's why discipline is a place of affirmation. Because his discipline um, reveals the v validity of his children. Ooh, they mine. Y'all know how you won't let just anybody correct your children. I'm going to correct them because they mine. Y'all heard what I just said? They belong to me. Uh, and so it reveals the validity of your children. Uh, yeah, we don't let everybody spank our babies. I know. Y'all parents, y'all going to bust some up if somebody spank it. Who, who you talking to? What child are you talking to? That one over there, mine. This is why foundational text, and he punishes each one. He accepts. Ooh, that's a good word. Somebody say, he accepts me as his child. And as I said before, I must say it again. Our prayer must be, Lord, don't let me live any kind of way void of your rebuke. Because watch this. Go, go to the next screen. If God allows you to live wicked, void of his discipline, then you are not his lineage. If God allows you to sin, void of his discipline, then you are not his seed. And if God allows you to be carnal, void of his discipline, you are not his child. This is a real litmus test to know if you really save. You know folk can say, I love God, God done blessed me with all this, and you know they live in their life real raggedy. God won't let you live any kind of way and have peace. And there's folk that are living any kind of way and they have peace. And what it really reveals is that you're not their child. You are not his child. Ooh, that's good news to me, y'all, that I know that I can't live in that kind of way. And God is always correcting me. God is always sending someone to rebuke me. And all it really means is that I'm his child. Ooh, you can only go so far with God without God pulling your behind back. Ooh, this is how you know when folk you folk can be drug dealers, folk can be doing all kind of stuff, folk can be wild, and somebody say wild, wow. and God's hand still be on them. Yeah. And God is trying to say, I'm trying to pull you back. Yeah, that's good news, y'all. That God would only let me go. Somebody say so far. So far. Ooh, his discipline, his discipline. That means we should rejoice as long as the Lord corrects us. In sin, we should rejoice as long as the Lord rebukes us in unrighteousness, and we should rejoice as long as the Lord disciplines us to walk uprightly. I don't want my life to live and be undisciplined, and I'm okay with that. God, don't check me. I don't want my life to be in disarray and dysfunction, and I'd be okay with that, and God be okay with that. Because really what it means, I'm not his child. Somebody say, I want to be a child. I want to be a child. The reason why y'all keep getting these words like this, God love you. <laughs> Don't be blaming Pastor Keith. Keith. God is trying to get his love towards you. See, I can just use that all the time when I got a little hard word. Watch this. Notice what the Lord speaks concerning Solomon in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14. The Bible says, and I will be his father, and he will be my son. And if he sins... I will correct and discipline him with the rod like any father would do. You know what it, what it really should say? Somebody say a good father because you got some raggedy fathers that don't care, but a good father. That's what he'll do. 
And that is our God and we are his own. As long as the Lord disciplines us, it reminds us that we still belong to God. Somebody say that's good news. God keep checking us about the areas that are undisciplined in our lives. God, when our lives are in disarray and dysfunction, keep checking me. Because it reminds me that I belong to you. So here's some questions we got to ask ourselves. Do we still belong to God? Do we actively receive his correction so that we can authentically say that we are his children? Hmm. Those are some good questions, y'all. That means we should not assume, watch this, that someone is a child of God because of their, um, their riches. But a real child of God is revealed by the degree of their rebukes. You've got a lot of prosperity preachers will let you know, oh, I'm a child of God. I'm a daughter of the king. No, no child of God should ever be broke. I, I get all of that. I, I hear what you're trying to say. But it's not based on riches because you got evil folk with riches. So what is really revealed is by the degree of the rebukes that God sent my way. Because you have never, somebody say, I'm never at a place of arrival. That means as long as you're on this journey, there should always be some area in your life that God is rebuking. I don't care how good you think you will. Somebody say, I still need rebukes. I said this at another church that I went to on last Sunday. I said, um, Serena mom says this. She says, no matter how old she gets, she'll, her, her mom will always be older than her. In other words, there's always something you can learn from me. And God is the same way. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how gifted you are. I don't care how talented you are. God, continue to send me rebukes. If I belong to you, God, rebuke me. It ain't about riches. Somebody say it's about the rebukes. Because God won't let his children live any kind of way. God knows how to trouble the children, his children, even at the thought of sin. God will trouble your spirit. Even when you plan to be undisciplined. Even when you think about being undisciplined, even when you think about laying in them covers and not going to work and calling in and saying you sick and you really not sick. God knows how to trouble your peace. So you still still there calling in and you're like, oh, I should just went to work. Y'all ever thought about that? And what God is really say, trying to say is that you belong to me. Ooh, that's good news. And you wonder why they won't give you the promotion because you're undisciplined. And if we desire to be God's children, then we must desire to live a life of discipline. I'm done, y'all. I probably went too much. I went a few minutes over my time. But watch this. Discipline affirms us with God and before God. Somebody say discipline. And this is why we're admonished at the beginning of our foundational text to not despise or be discouraged by that. Listen, when your pastor check you, when somebody else check you, when God will check you and trouble your very thoughts, somebody say don't get discouraged by that. That there's affirmation in that. His discipline is also our place of affirmation. And this is why we must receive the Lord's discipline with great joy. Because where his discipline is, watch this, there's value in his chastisement. In other words, God is always trying to add something to our life as a result of discipline. There is veracity in his compassion. In other words, his love is made authentic as once we have access to his discipline. And there is validity, the validity of his children. I know I belong to God. Someone say, I know I belong to God. Because God won't let me live any kind of way. Somebody say it, because God won't let me live any kind of way. But watch this, I believe there's even a greater affirmation in our text. Watch what verse 10b says, and I'm done. But God's discipline is always good for us, so that we might share, watch this, in his holiness. This means when we receive the Lord's discipline, we also, watch this, receive the virtue of his character. Woo! That's good news. So what God is really trying to say, that if, if you can receive my discipline, I want you to now reflect me. Yeah. Yeah. This is why, notice this, I said that disciple is derived from the word discipline. The reason that God wants us to be disciple is so that we might reflect him. So if I can receive his discipline, if I can live a disciplined life, somebody say, I now reflect him. No greater affirmation from God to say that one right there look like me. I'm going to say something and I'm done because I, I, I don't mind saying this. Y'all done heard my testimony before. I had a baby that I thought was mine, but it was not mine. Everybody around knew that that baby didn't look like me, but nobody told me. Y'all hear what I just said? Nobody told me. Somebody said I was young. 
I, I was young and dumb. I think the greatest sign or affirmation that, a, that God could give a parent is when you can look at that baby and know that baby look like you. It's just so precious that I can see myself in Caden. That I can see myself in Sarai. And what God is trying to say, I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm trying to get you to look like, somebody say me. Somebody say that's a disciplined life. Let us stand to our feet. I'm going to be real quick, y'all. Hey, somebody say, God, discipline me. Father, we thank you and honor you. God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for what you're trying to do in our lives. Many of us, God, have run from your discipline. God, I know some of us in this room today, our mother is trying to tell us what to do. And we think they just all in our business. But God is trying to send his discipline our way. We got folk that keep telling me to come to church and be consistent. But really what God is trying to do is get your life to be disciplined. That folk always telling me to be on time. And be on time. Girl, you're always late. And God is saying, I need you to be disciplined. Thank you, God, that you use your discipline to affirm us in you and before you. And God, for that, we say thank you. I thank you, God, for every believer in this place. God, that there's value in your chastisement. All you're trying to do is give us what's due. We ain't got to try to figure it out. We ain't got to try to um, get the hook up, God, because you've already got it laid up. All we got to do is lead, live a disciplined life and receive your discipline. God, there is the veracity of your compassion. Your love towards us is authentic. I know we don't always correlate discipline with compassion, but in you, God, it is true. You're trying to tell us you love us because you won't let us live any kind of way. And God, thank you, God, that it validates us as your child. We want to be your child, God, we pray. We're not doing this for any other reason, God, but to make you proud. And God, help us to have the virtue of your character. We want you to look down, God, and say that we look like you. Woo, what the, what, what, that's the greatest affirmation, God, that we can ever receive, that we look like you. Somebody say, help me to look like God. And if you believe everything in this word and you want you receive this word with all joy, somebody say, thank God. And amen.